Exodus chapter number 26. We'll begin reading in verse number 31. I'll bring you up to speed what is happening. God has given Moses the blueprint on the mountain for the tabernacle, the church of the wilderness. God is instructing Moses on how to build it, how to lay it out, and how to have all the furniture where it needs to be. Everything is done very distinctly. Everything is done decently and in order. God left nothing to their imaginations. Can I say God still does things decently and in order? He never does anything outside the principles of the Word of God. And He certainly has a word for us. By the time we get to Exodus 26, He is dealing in these verses we're going to read about the veil that separates the holy place from the most holy place. Exodus 26, verse 31, the Bible says, And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of cunning work. With cherubims shall it be made. Thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood, overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold, and the four sockets of silver. Thou shalt hang it upon the veil, hang up the veil under the tatches, that thou uh, mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony, and the veil shall divide you divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless you. You've been good to us. Lord, we're without excuse not to pour out our boxes of alabaster. Pour out our praise unto thee. Lord, we are an undeserving and unworthy people. But yet, God, you loved us anyway. And you made a way where we could be born again into the family of God. You made a way where old Gentile dogs could be saved, made fit subjects for the kingdom of heaven. You made a way where the vile could become holy. God, we bless you. Father, I thank you for the day you blessed us with. And I thank you for the hope of revival. Lord, my hope's not in Cody Zorn or Travis Parker. They're just vessels. My hope's in the Lord of glory. God, I do pray for these men. You give them traveling mercy. Give them the message we need to hear from heaven. God, we know revival's heaven sent. It comes from Thee. God, I pray that, Lord, You pour it out even today. Now, Father, I sure would like to give You my best this morning, but my throat isn't what it normally is. And, Lord, it's worse sounding than it is worse feeling. God, these people need to hear the word of God. I'm reminded the great apostle said when he was weak, then was he strong. So God, take my weakness and my infirmity and glorify your namesake. Help us from the scriptures to find ourselves right smack dab in the perfect will of God. Father, breathe on this place. God, deal with every heart. And God, give glory to your name. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. We find in these verses the sanctuary's veil. Now, if we could lay it out, the sanctuary was made in a rectangle. The 12 tribes of Israel were laid outside the sanctuary, and numbers of troops, based on how large of each tribe uh, the individuals were. If you had an aerial view, it would look like a cross. And can I say that in the sanctuary, there was two sections, the outer sanctuary, which is called the holy place, and then behind the veil, the most holy place, or the holy of holies. Outside the veil in the holy place, any of the Levitical priests could come. They had the table showbread. Uh, they had the lamps in there. Uh, they had other things in there. But within the veil, the most holy place, lied the Ark of the Covenant. On the top of the Ark of the Covenant had the mercy seat. And inside the Ark of the Covenant had the tables of stone that God had given Moses the Ten Commandments. And it had the rod that had budded to show that Aaron's family, the Levites, would serve as high priest. And can I say that once a year, the high priest and the high priest alone would go within the veil and offer up the blood sacrifice on the mercy seat, uh, and if he had done everything properly, the Lord would accept the sacrifice, and the Shekinah glory of God would fall on that place uh, and consume the blood on the mercy seat, uh, and uh, uh, the sins of the people were pushed back for a year. The only other time the high priest would go within the veil is where he would wear the Urim and the Thummim and go in and seek to hear from God the will of God for the people of Israel. Now with that in mind, we see the sanctuary's veil described here. Notice the specifics of the veil. In verse 31, we find that it has three colors, blue, purple, and scarlet. It's made of fine twine linen of cunning work, and it has cherubims embroidered on it. Notice, if you will, the separation done by the veil. Verse 33 said at the end of that verse, And the veil shall divide uh, unto you between the holy place and the most holy. Can I say that there is a place where God will meet with man. Yes. Amen. Mm, but can I say it is a separated place. It is a place that God will reveal himself like no other place. You and I must have to aspire to enter into this place uh, that God might reveal himself in an intimate and wonderful way. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to see God in that light? Right. Who wouldn't want to feel His presence in that much power? Yeah. Who wouldn't want Almighty God's hand upon you? I want you to see the symbolism of the veil. We find that the Trinity is represented in the veil. The three colors, blue, purple, and scarlet, represent the Godhead. Blue represents the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit of God. It shows our heavenly position and reveals our character. Purple represents royalty. It's a picture of the Father. And scarlet represents the blood atonement which is a picture of Jesus Christ. The Trinity is represented in the veil. Can I say the fine twine linen? In verse 31, 
It wasn't just fine linen. It was fine twine linen. Brother Ray, anytime you find that in the Bible, you'll also find that them robes we put on in glory are made of fine twine linen. And anytime you find that, it's always a picture of God's grace through faith. Brother Doug, I'm glad I'm not standing here under my own merit. I'm glad I've been saved by the grace of God. What a blessing that God's grace through faith was imputed unto me uh, because I had enough sense to believe in the Lord. Huh? We find that it represented way back before Jesus died on Calvary in this veil. Can I say the embroidered cherubims mentioned show the presence and unapproachability to God. Can I say God is everywhere? He's an omnipotent, omniscient, uh, omnipresent God. He's everywhere. But can I say you and I just couldn't approach him? Mm. Mm. Jesus said no man come unto the Father except he be drawn. Thanks be unto God for the day the Holy Ghost came to where I was, got a hold of my heart, uh, and drew me to God. Uh, and I bless the Lord uh, that God made himself known in my heart and life. Uh, we see uh, that there are four pillars of wood overlaid with gold in verse 32. They're made out of shit of wood and overlaid with gold. Well, that's a real blessing right there. Can I say that that represents, uh, since there's four of them, people from the four corners of the earth. They're made out of wood. Wood represents humanity. Can I say, uh, there's nobody born anywhere that Jesus don't love. There's nobody born anywhere that Jesus won't save. Uh, Jesus tasted death for all men uh, uh, from the four corners of the earth. Uh, but it says they were overlaid with gold. What does that represent? Gold always represents righteousness. Uh, and the moment that you and I that are saved got born again, uh, we got robed in the righteousness uh, of Almighty God. Uh, and anybody that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the righteousness of God is imputed unto them. We see that. But can I say there's also mentions in verse 32, silver sockets or sockets of silver that hold the veil. Silver is always a picture of redemption. And can I say what joins uh, the veil to that uh, wooden tatchet, wood being humanity, the veil being a picture of Christ, is redemption. If you're here today and you're not saved, the only way you'll ever get to go to heaven is you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. I've got good news. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He will save you. He said if any would come to him, he'd no wise cast them out. But the choice is yours, friend. You've got to be willing to turn from your sin and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to save you. Oh, if you want to be saved, he'll save you today. Amen. Well, he saved me, and he saved many of these folks around here, but he's interested in you, and he'll save you today. Yeah. But then I want to draw your attention to verse 32. Notice what it says. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shit and wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. Now we got the sockets of silver that represents redemption. We have hooks of gold that represents righteousness. But I'm interested in them hooks. When I first studied this years ago on this veil, Brother Doug, nobody said anything about them hooks except the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost said, mmm. When well, I've learned when the Holy Ghost says, mmm, there's something there. Yes, sir. Uh, so I just kept a digging and kept a digging and kept a digging and kept a digging. Then I dug some more. And Brother Clint, I got an old set of commentaries. So I don't want to mention anything about them hooks. You know what I found out about them hooks, Brother Ron? Those hooks are from an old origin Hebrew word that isn't even in existence anymore. The only place you find that word is in that, that, that Bible where it says they're hooks. 
They said, Miss Nancy, the only other place that those characters, the only other word that you find those characters even in is the word Jehovah. And can I say that it was Jehovah God that hung Jesus on Calvary that he might bleed and die and pay for our sins. Uh, it was Jehovah God uh, that hung him there uh, for his love for you and I, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God hung his Son on Calvary so that you and I could be saved. Can I say this? Let's think about all this coming home from revival. I left down there about 9.30. Thursday night after preaching, drove home, got home about 4.30. I was thinking about God speaking and bringing all this fresh to my memory. And this is what I want to preach on. I want to preach on the veil of revival. The veil of revival. Now listen to me. This veil is more than just a little shower curtain. It was as thick as the width of a man's hand. Four to six inches thick. And no light was to come from behind it out into the holy place. And I already mentioned only the high priest could enter in there. And so... He got to see things that nobody else got to see. He got to hear things nobody else got to hear. Can I say uh, uh, this week uh, we've prayed, we've sought the Lord. Uh, we believe it's the will of God for Brother Cody uh, and Brother Travis to come. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, Brother Cody Zorn is one of the most popular and one of the most powerful preachers uh, in all of the independent fundamental Baptist movement. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, Travis Parker is not as well known, but he's ever been as a powerful preacher. Uh, and both these men have humble spirits. Uh, both of them are coming. Both of them are sacrificing to come. Uh, both of them are excited to come. Uh, but I'm going to help you right now. Neither one has revival in their briefcase. Revival comes from the Lord. And can I say, God's going to send revival, but you've got to go within the veil to get it. He said, Preacher, you already said only the high priest got to go in there. I've got good news. In Jesus Christ, according to Revelation 1 6, uh, we've been made kings and priests. Uh, We've been made a priest to rule and reign over our flesh. Uh, and we've been made a king in Christ Jesus. Uh, I no longer have to go through a high priest. Uh, I no longer have to go through any other royalty. Uh, I can go directly to the Lamb of God. Uh, uh, he is my advocate. Uh, he is my intercessor. Uh, he is my high priest. Uh, you and I can go within the veil. The question, Brother Brian, is will we? go through the veil of revival. Listen, few have even approached true revival's door, let alone experience its power and transformation. There has not been true revival come to America in well over 100 years, Amen. going on 120 years, since true revival fell from heaven into this place called earth and it transformed communities it's not for a lack of the power of God it's for a lack of the power of approaching the veil of revival again I ask you will you be revived this week I didn't ask you if you was coming to church I didn't ask you if you was going to get Cody Zorn to sign the front of your Bible. Which, by the way, young people, is an honorable thing. Because what's going to happen if the Lord don't come back, y'all going to get old like me. But you can go back to that Bible and say, boy, I remember when that preacher came by. Preached the Word of God. He was a blessing to me. Uh, I mean, some of you want Joe Burrow's autograph. Why don't you get somebody's real autograph? Why don't you get one of the preacher's? 
Uh, it broke my heart the other night. There's a line of young people wanting me to sign their Bible. But then, Brother Clinton, fella that's been at Faith Baptist Church ever since I've been going there 20 something years. His name's Brother Mike. Brother Mike sings with Brother Gene. Brother Mike, 80 something years old, comes up. Brother Doug, I want you to sign my Bible. I'm thinking, Brother Mike, you ought to sign my Bible. Huh? But can I say, you can get the preacher to sign your Bible, don't mean you're going to have revival. Uh, so what's it going to take to enter the veil of revival? First of all, one must be approved. Remember them cherubims? Lost people don't get to enter this veil. You can't be revived unless you've been made alive. So you have to be approved. And if you're born again, you've got all it takes to enter within the veil of revival. Hmm? you got to be born again. Uh, being saved has privileges. You have to be approved. Can I say this? That not only do you have to be approved being saved, but you have to be approved that there's nothing between you and God. Amen. Your life's got to be clean before the Lord or you're not going within the veil. Do you understand that that high priest, when he took in that blood sacrifice, if he had not done everything exactly the way God told Moses to have him do it, when he went through the veil, laid that blood on the sacrifice, his life was required of him. He'd die. That rope tied to him. They'd just pull him out, point another high priest. How'd you like to be the next guy? I guarantee you'd be real sober about them details. Huh? Some of you ladies got grandma's recipes. And you've been doing it so long you don't look at it anymore. Huh? God don't forget the recipe. And just because we've been doing it a long time, we think we know what it is. We might skip a step. Might not put in the exact amount. You're not going through the veil then. Everything has to be done distinctly. You must be approved to go through the veil. Can I say this? You must don the proper apparel to go through the veil. I knew that'd get a shout. Amen. That high priest, when he was slaying the lamb's throat, he had on sacrificial garments. But then he'd have to go and wash himself and cleanse himself and then put on his high priestly garments. You just can't enter in here without having the right garments on and God show up. Now, I'm not talking about your physical clothing. I'm talking about a, a garment far greater than that. I'm talking about that you need to be donned with humility. If you do not wear humility, you will not get through the veil. Jesus Christ humbled himself, became a servant. Uh, if he humbled himself for you and I to enter into God's glory, we must humble ourselves to enter within the veil of revival. It's going to take the pair of humility. It's going to take the peril of honor. Why would to God we lived in a day like yesteryear when there were honorable men? I'm not even talking about politicians. I'm talking about people who come to church. Honorable men. Their yea is yea and their nay is nay. If you haven't honored the Lord in your daily walk in that Bible, you can't enter within the veil of revival. You've got to say not only humility and honor, but you've got to have hope, what we call faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You've got to have that blessed assurance 
that when you go through that veil, you're going to see God. Mm. Can I say, to enter the veil of revival, one must be approved. He must be born again. He must don the proper apparel. But you also must possess the right attitude. You need to have an attitude of reverence. You know what's wrong with all these feel-good churches? All the ones that got the rock bands and the smoke and, and got the little stool with the microphone for the preacher and his little skinny jeans. Uh, and uh, 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 you got the window washers. They call this brazing their necks. If I do that long enough, I'll be breaking my neck. You know what's wrong with all of that? There's no reverence toward God. It's all fleshly. Amen. Let me help you with something. My flesh likes the little doobie brothers every now and then. Right. Uh, my flesh can handle, you know, a little Elvis every now and then. But in my spirit, I can't worship God. <clears throat> Seeking the doobie brothers and Elvis. We go another direction there. I'm just saying, in my spirit, I can't reverence God with Elvis and Johnny Cash and the doobie brothers on my mind. And if I come to a place called a place of worship and all I hear is the Doobie Brothers and Johnny Cash and Elvis, you listening to me? I'm not reverencing God. And all the worship, that ain't about God. Oh, there's a spirit behind it, but the Bible says try the spirits whether they be of God. It's not the Holy Spirit. Huh? Can I say, if you're going to enter within the veil of revival. It's going to take reverence. Yes. Where you realize that you're not even worthy to even call God by His name. Amen. But through the blood of Jesus Christ you can cry, Abba, Father. And you know Him in a more intimate way than the Jews could have ever known Him. Amen. Can I say it's not only going to take the right attitude of reverence, but it's going to take an attitude of renewal that you want to enter within that veil that he'll make you new, that he'll do something in you that you have never had. And when you leave out of that veil, people will see something they've never saw. Right. You know, when Moses came off the mount, his face shined as the sun. Yeah. You know why? Because he'd been close to God. Yeah. And when you're close to God, it tells on you. Can I say not only the attitude of reverence and renewal, but you need to have the attitude, I'll do whatever is required. Yeah. Attitude of submission. Whatever is required of me, Brother Ray, that's what I'll do. Miss hmm. Nett, you sing that song, Whatever It Takes, Lord, I'm willing to do. Can I say, people won't enter within the veil of revival if you're not willing to do whatever it takes. Amen. See, Brother Bob, our, our mindset is I'll do whatever's convenient, yeah. but not whatever it takes. Right. You pray for Miss Sonny, just found out she's going to have hip surgery in about eight weeks. Hmm. Uh, let's pray the great physician touches her. I uh, thought about this. We're going to enter this veil of revival. We need to have an appetite for God. We need to be seeking God. The song Miss Brittany sings about four days late. Lord, I need you and I need you now. You know why we don't have God? We don't seek God. Right. Right. Amen. He said, seek and you shall find. He said, you have not because you ask not. 
We come praying for good service. We didn't come praying for God. But you won't go through this veil unless you're seeking God because that's all you're going to find on the other side of the veil. Ten. And I thought about this lastly. To enter the veil of revival, one must pay, pay the appraisal. Revival always costs you something. Now listen to me, listen to me well. God will never ask you of anything that he won't bless you in return far more than what he cost you. But our mindset, Colonel, is fear of loss is greater than fear of gain. Well, if I give God this, how am I going to get it replaced? It'll help us, Brother Adrian, if we just give it all to God. God, all I have is yours. Then all of a sudden, costs don't seem much because you don't have anything. You've already given it all to him. But can I say this? To go through that veil, it's going to cost you some time. You're not going to blow in and blow out and walk through the veil. It's going to cost you some time on your face and some time with God. See, that's the one thing we don't want to give up is time. How come we got time for everything in the world but we don't have time for God? It costs you your time. It's going to cost you your trust. Go through this veil, you're going to have to prove you really trust God. See, we trust him when somebody else is going through something. But it's going to cost you your trust. And then I thought about this. It's going to cost you to deal truthfully with the Lord. Yeah. Brother Clint sings that song, Miss Glory used to sing about the secret place. We'll deal with God in certain places. But that innermost man, that secret place, we don't want anybody to know about. You're going to have to deal with God about that if you're going to go through the veil. Let me help you something. We have dreamed up revival being some supernatural fire coming from heaven. Supernatural send the rain and showers of blessing. Supernatural things. It is a supernatural thing. It's called taking one step closer to God than we've ever taken before. That's where the veil is. Just stepping out farther than you've ever been before. And letting God reveal himself in ways you never imagined. Quit having these preconceived little notions of who you think God is. Ask God to open your heart and your mind to see how big he really is. And then you just might enter within the veil. My dear friends, there's no place like it. I say this every revival meeting. I'm going to say it again. The world has yet to see one church truly sold out for the glory of God. The world hasn't seen it yet. You say, what about the early church? You had Doubt and Thomas. Wouldn't it be a thrill if we was the church that truly went all in with God and seen what God could really do? See, we want God to save America. Let's start with how about God save our loved ones. And then God save our community. Then our county. Then our state. Just take it one step at a time. But God's so big as we're taking steps, he might just win America. But it's up to you and I. Will we enter the veil? Will you step farther out in faith 
towards God, then even your mind wants you to step out. Well, you go farther than God, with God than you've ever went before. Friend, if you will, you just might enter the veil. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. While he's coming, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for helping us, Lord. God, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for that veil, what it represented. Thank you for the day that you gave up the ghost, that veil rent from top to bottom. Thank you, Lord, one of these days you're coming and the veil that separates us from seeing you is going to be done away with. We're going to see you as you are. But Lord, there is a cloak of revival that we haven't seen. Help us, Lord, to enter within the veil of revival. Breathe to where folks could not deny you, where folks would hunger and thirst for you. Lord, I pray you'd break our molds of complacency and the true fire of God would fall on this place this week. And God, we'd see Jesus high and lifted up and magnified and glorified like we've never seen before. Help us, Father. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.